We'll now proceed to the Q&A part of the program. Each candidate has one minute to respond to the questions. First question, how do you plan to engage all aspects of the ward, residents, business owners, cultural institutions, in long range planning for the ward? Let me give you the order of the, of the people who will be answering. We'll start with Mr. Citron, then Mr. Casey, then Mr. Cummins, then Ms. Garcia. Vamos a empezar con las preguntas. La primera pregunta nos dice, ¿cómo piensa envolver todos los aspectos de nuestro distrito escolar, los residentes, los negocios, los dueños de negocios, instituciones, instituciones culturales, en fin, a lo largo del planeamiento de nuestro distrito escolar? Now, I believe they're talking about all aspects. When they say all aspects, they mean residents, business owners, cultural institution. How will you engage those entities in planning for the future of this ward? There are um, mics in front of you. Just flip the switch. One, two. Okay, so Nelson will begin, then Mr. Casey. Thank you, it's very easy, Helen. When I was a member of council, we had the block clubs throughout the wards. And any time there was any major development that were occurring through businesses throughout the, through our ward, I made sure that we brought those business leaders or business owners or their representatives into the block clubs. The first thing I wanted to make sure was that the business owner was somehow, there was a job expansion and the city was helping, that they were able to get the first jobs living in that area because of base of transportation. And we created a solid way to show that by having businesses by having the block clubs and by having cultural institutions all working together, we were able to raise families together and take them out of the assistance and get them in those jobs. That's what I look at looking at doing again because that system has been broken. Mr. Casey. Thank you. Uh, this is this is going to be probably the simplest part for me because I'm so community oriented and resident engaged. I've stated before that I'm going to put together a 25 member councilmanic advisory board that will help guide, which will be represented by not only the residents, but the businesses, the faith-based community, so that we can have equal representation across the, across the whole ward. Um, for me, resident engagement is the, most, is the mo most important thing. The stronger the residents are, the stronger the business owners are, the, the easier the council job will become. As the stronger the residents are, um, and more engaged they are, the safer the communities are, the safer the communities are, and the more engaged everybody is, the easier it is to bring businesses into the neighborhood. Mr. Cummings. Thank you. Thank you for the question. Um, currently, we, we've been doing issues pertaining to bringing people together through a variety of ways. First of all, it is very important to realize that it's not only the residents' concerns and business concerns, but also particularly in our community, institutions that provide social services, as well as education in the faith-based community. So in fact, we are involved with all of those communities currently I would also like to say that the Stockyards, Clark, Fulton, and Brooklyn Center Community Development Office, the office that we put together in 2010, actually has one of the only network weavers in the city. It was funded by the Cleveland Foundation. And we do fund um, organizations such as Weston Brookside, Esperanza, Julio de Burgos, who work very closely with the Hispanic Business Center, Spanish American Committee. And we bring these groups together in, in various ways and formats, and particularly with planning, we do work through those partners as well as the block clubs to bring people together for important long range and community planning issues. Ms. Garcia. Thank you. Residents are the key members in this ward. As I mentioned earlier, I have social service experiences, not only by the receiving end, but also on the giving end. I will um, 
strengthen my centers of influence and my partnerships with the faith-based organizations. When people are in need, they constantly go to their local churches. I will strongly um, build that relationship between the faith-based organizations, the nonprofit organizations. Also, I understand the vital role that the CDC plays here in our community. I will work closely with the CDCs and the residents in Ward 14 to ensure that the needs of the people in Ward 14 are understood and met through our mutual collaboration. Thank you. The next question, why should young families move into Ward 14? La pregunta es por qué debieran nuestras familias jóvenes mudarse al distrito electoral número 14. The order for this question is Ms. Garcia, Mr. Cintron, Mr. Casey, Mr. Cummins. Ms. Garcia. That's very simple. I will proudly say that I love Ward 14. It's a beautiful place to live, and there are a lot of great opportunities here in Ward 14. It will be a new, upcoming, and growing area. Thank you. Mr. Sintran. We have, we have major institutions around Ward 14. They make us unique. We have Metro Hospital, which is one of our major anchors. We have Nestle. We have uh, uh, LJ Rose. And I could go on with all those major institutions that do hire people. Now the thing is, the Ward 14 is one of the most affordable places to live. And the key thing is how to provide grants to homeowners, the young people who want to move in. Downtown is so close to us. Clinton State University. So it's a way of marketing and tell them what is here that's a treasure. We have Ohio City has grown up. We have Tremont that is also growing. So Clark Fulton, Stark Yards, and the new sections of the Ward is the growing section. So it's a way that we need to market this like any other product that we market out there. It is to show them that Cleveland Ward 14 is the best place to live and affordable place to live with a family to raise a family. Mr. Casey. Well, you're talking to somebody who's never left. Um, when I, when my parents and my friends and everybody else decided to move out, I decided to stay. Why? Because it's a great neighborhood. It's diverse close to downtown, small businesses, schooling, the housing is, is affordable. I don't know why you wouldn't want to live here. Um, talking to somebody who never, never even thought about leaving, um, all you gotta do is, is walk the, the, the neighborhood, see the diversity, see everything that Ward 14 has to offer. It's gotta be one of the best places in the city to be. Mr. Cummins. I would, I would start out by saying that, first of all, um, there are already a lot of families that, that have moved into this area and stay in this area, particularly with youth and their children, because of the affordable housing, the close proximity to services, and the, the vast array of services as well. Even though we do go to see our commons, there's quite a bit of local businesses within our community that people really go to and really enjoy. Also, this is the community that has the largest percentage of Hispanic population in the state of Ohio. Uh, I think the Hispanic community in particular, through Julio de Burgos and through organizations like Esperanza, Spanish American Committee, feel a sense of community for the Puerto Rican and other Latino Hispanic cultures that are here. I think that's very important and it, and it brings a level of community. I think apart from that, we do have excellent organizations like Metro Health, Boys and Girls Club, and other organizations that help provide programming for youth. Next question. Um, each, just as a background information, each councilman receives an allocation of what we call community development block grant money, which is federal money, your tax dollars coming back to the local area. So this question deals with that issue. How will you use your community development funding for social services, for property development, and for community development corporations? Para explicar la, la siguiente pregunta, cada uno de los asambleístas de nuestra ciudad recibe un dinero, un fondo, para poder usarlo en diferentes organizaciones comunitarias de nuestra área. Por ende, la pregunta tiene que ver con el nivel de los fondos que se van a usar para la comunidad. ¿Cómo ustedes 
usarían el Fondo de Desarrollo Comunitario y Servicios Sociales y de propiedad, de desarrollo de propiedad, etcétera, en nuestra comunidad. The order for the answer on this question is that Mr. Cummins, Ms. Garcia, Mr. Cintron, Mr. Case. Mr. Cummins. Just in, the, in an effort of transparency, which I really strongly believe in, um, every councilman currently receives $400,000 a year in community development block grant monies. There's also additional monies that I want to mention. We currently are receiving approximately $70,000 a year uh, from the casino revenues, and there's also money that we're receiving uh, in the amount of approximately $80,000 to $120,000 from the Steel Yard uh, Commons uh, tax rate amount of finance. All of these funds the, the, are used for different purposes and have different regulations. The Community Development Block Grant monies, 75% um, of those funds have to go through fiscal development for things like housing and businesses. So the majority of those monies goes to the two development corporations that serve both sections and sections of the current Ward 14 that will likely continue uh, in the next round as well. But things like safety and, and other aspects, like these cameras are putting in, before we spend those monies, we work with the safety committee uh, in ensuring that we're using it properly. Ms. Garcia. I personally, and I'm glad this is being recorded, I personally will start with repairing the streets. I've busted three tires and bent two rims. I would focus on fixing the city streets and these potholes. It's a major issue and it's also a safety concern, not only for ourselves as adults when we're driving, but also the children that are out on the streets riding their bikes, roller skating, and actually participating on activities. I would also spend a majority of that money on surveillance cameras in the areas of Lincoln West, Luis Munoz, Marie, and Viewer, because there's a safety issue here in our city and our kids need to be protected at all times. Thank you. Mr. Sintra. I want to make sure I understand the question. You said uh, community development, social service, and what was the third one? Um, community development corporations. Okay. Community development corporations, social, social services. Social services and property development. Property development. HUD has a guideline, and, and that guideline tells us how we need to, we could use our dollars. It says housing, uh, public improvement, land use, public service, and economic development. Go on the internet and you can find how we could use the dollars. Now, it is a pet project of the member of council where it's best allocating those funds. When I went into city council, I saw that the money was not uh, equal balanced throughout the entire ward. So what I made sure is that I put enough money to take care of the residents first. If you need a home repair project, you got 50% grant. If we needed to do street improvement, I match it with other funds to make sure we got street improvement. And they continue on. But it is based on the councilman knowledge of understanding what's around the, the entire ward. It's, it's not its own giving. So I made sure that those dollars was well spent and I took the balance of that checkbook better than my own personal check because that is your tax dollars and, and right from the federal government. Mr. Casey. The answer to that one for me, real, real simple, is I don't know yet. Community Development Block Grants is your money. And what I would want to do is engage the residents on how to spend that money. We all know that money has to go toward CDCs. Um, we have common sense when it comes to that. We know that we need additional help with the housing and safety and all that other stuff. Um, but without the resident engagement, I've never ever one time ever heard any council person go to the people and say, we have $400,000 in community development block grant money. How do you want me to spend it? That's one of my agendas. I'm gonna involve the residents on how to actually spend the CDBG dollars. It's your money. You should have an input on how those dollars are spent. Okay, our next question. With the increase of juvenile delinquency in our high schools and neighborhoods, what is your agenda to engage or help redirect our youths into positive activities and respect for authority? Con el aumento de la delincuencia juvenil en nuestras escuelas superiores y vecindarios, ¿cuál es su agenda para envolver y ayudar a redirigir nuestros jóvenes en actividades positivas y respeto por autoridad. 
The order for this round is Mr. Casey, Mr. Cummins, Ms. Garcia, Mr. Sintra. As a former juvenile court probation officer, I understand that a lot of the a lot of the delinquency issues that we as residents face on the street comes from a lack of authority or responsibility from home. There's no way that any council person is ever going to be able to philosophically change the rearing habits of individuals. When I was a week seat coordinator, we ran juvenile curfew sweeps. 65 to 70 percent of the kids that we would catch in these curfew sweeps weren't even from the neighborhoods. So we have, we know that we have uh, a social service problem with the name with with um, with the, the parenting problem. When we ran our, our delinquency curfew sweeps, we were able to initiate. Um, uh, we were able to have the diversion programs um, where we actually had the parents and the children um, have to work together in order to make maintain their homes better. Mr. Cummins. Thank you. As a council member, I currently work in particular with all of our schools through the student parent organizations, the SBOs, as well as trying to get to the issue of development of student government and other student clubs within those schools. It's been difficult from the standpoint of changes, particularly in our high schools, um, but it's something that we will continue to work with the school on. In addition to that, Lincoln West, of course, has been providing after school hours through the summers for uh, diversion types of programs already. Ryan mentioned curfew sweeps. I also want to mention, again, the Boys and Girls Club, various churches, the, uh, also Julio de Burgos, Esperanza. They've got some excellent mentoring programs that we try to get, again, through the student parent organizations and block clubs, try to get that information out to people so that they know what those opportunities are, in addition to a city youth employment program that we also support. Ms. Garcia. Wow, that's a good question. I'm very passionate about the youth. Um, I will speak from personal experience. I have athletes in my home, and the way I kept my children out of the streets were keeping them involved and engaged in sports, the recreational centers, and if elected, I will be knocking on Matt Zone's door because I am very happy and pleased with the services that he has put together over at the recreational center, and I think that it's very important to engage our youth in sports, I will also adopt a program that LeBron James has put together where they're offering iPads and certain incentives to these kids once they complete their um, the year in school and they have proven that they have um, increased their grades and that they have actually, actually been active and participating in school in a very positive form. Thank you. Mr. Sintram. We need to get to the basics. I'm a product of the Cleveland Public School System. And I remember when I was attending the Cleveland school, school system, during the summer, we were able to hold jobs. All that has been eliminated. And right now, as a former correctional officer, I got to see a lot of our young kids in jail. We have to work with the system. We had to bring those foundations out as legislators and work with all these different foundations who put money elsewhere to make sure that we can create good projects and good jobs for these kids. Other countries are doing it. They identify those troubled kids, who have some kind of special needs, put them into a training course, and making sure that they can continue working on a different job. If we could continue them busy, we would not have the trouble that we're having out here now. But it takes the school system, and it takes us the legislators to work together, and as parents to work together, and also the faith group basis. There's a lot of fundamental places that we can go to and make sure that this can happen. But it's take a strong leader as a member concept to make it happen. Next question, what is your strategy for engaging the faith-based community and working with them to increase social activism in our ward? Próxima pregunta, ¿cuál es tu estrategia para envolver las iglesias y comunidades religiosas en trabajar para aumentar el activismo social en nuestro distrito electoral? The order this time, Mr. Centron, Mr. Casey, Mr. Cummins, Ms. Garcia. We know that the faith base is of the foundation of our city. 
not only the legislators, but the foundation. When we need that spiritual help, we go to our great, uh, great uh, believers. It is our job to make sure when I was in council that I held meetings on the monthly meetings with the clergy uh, around the War 14. I see certain faces from around here that I remember meeting at city council. And we talk about the different projects that they wanted to see, and I was able to find different kind of funding necessary to make it happen. But there's a separation between government and faith. But it takes a strong leader to find different funding that is not government dollars to help those foundations to help our community. And I will continue that same leadership as soon as I get elected as a member of city council. Mr. Casey. Look, we addressed this with me last week. Um, and we all know that my faith base is shaky right now over what I've been through with the Catholic Church. But what I will do is it wouldn't matter if you were faith-based or if you were a business owner, or if you were a resident, I'll engage you. I'll be there for you, we'll work through whatever issues you will, you'll need, and I'll be supportive of you. And I'm just being honest with you, I'm not just going to bend over backwards because it's faith-based. I have my own religious beliefs, but I hope that I can engage the faith-based community, but I'm not going to engage the faith-based community just because they're faith-based. Um, I'm going to engage them because they're regular people, your normal people, your residents, your business owners. If you're a pastor, God bless you um, for being the pastor, and I'll still engage you. But as far as doing something just because it's faith-based, it's just like doing something because of your ethnicity. I'm just, I can't be a part of that. I want to be here for everybody. Mr. Cummins. Thank you. We currently have very, very strong relationships with the faith-based community. I want to just point out a few. The Scranton Row Bible Church puts on a very large soccer camp. We have several pastors here already in the room. I want to point out Pastor Reyes and Medina. There's a resurgence of trying to bring the churches together. I've got a 12-year history since being back in Cleveland from the Peace Corps. I worked with the Brooklyn Ministerial Association for eight years, and now I'm working with the pastors in this community as well. It's very important because there are, other than education and residential, it's where the families can come together. And we first try to work with them in understanding they're facing some of the same problems our community is in terms of people who are too busy to attend their church or too busy to attend our meetings. Um, so we share a lot of the same challenges, and we always look toward, towards those churches, particularly for our hunger centers and social services. They're very, very important to our community and we try to support them and educate the public and the neighborhoods about them as much as we can. Ms. Garcia. I am a strong supporter of the faith-based organizations as I mentioned earlier. I have a ministry called For His Glory where I do bring in pastors and preachers and we participate with many of the Hispanic churches here in Cleveland. The churches need our help. It is very difficult for these churches to survive without our support. And going back to the community development grant dollars, I would spend a portion of that to help these faith-based organizations, regardless of the uh, religion, because they are the ones who will constantly help us. Brian Cummings mentioned in another meeting um, the other day, and I will piggyback on that, that War 14 has a lot of social service issues. Who else or what better organization to help us than the faith-based organizations. We really rely on a group of people to bring this ward to a better stage of our lives here. Thank you, pastors, for everything that you do in the community. Next question. <clears throat> this concerns housing and code enforcement. What can you do to help senior citizens and others who do not meet the income guidelines um, that are proposed by the Community Development Block Grant dollars how would you help them maintain their homes um, for those who do not qualify for the low interest loans or their income is too high? The order this round would be Ms. Garcia, Mr. Cintron, Mr. Casey, Mr. Cummins. Ms. Garcia, pregunta. Concierne al código de hogares o viviendas 
el código de enforzamiento de vivienda. ¿Cómo puede usted ayudar a nuestras comunidades de envejecientes y otros quienes no tienen los ingresos o las la guías de ingresos para mantener sus propiedades o no, y no cualifican para préstamos de bajo interés? El orden va a ser la señora García, el señor Cintrón, Casey y Jones. The seniors need our support. We need to take care of them. Vacant homes increase crime. A recent study shows that a violent crime goes up by 15% within 250 feet of vacant homes. We need to assist the senior citizens. We need to assist them with safety. And we need to provide funding when there are needs, to, when there are needs that arise. A lot of these issues with these homes are because a lot of these senior citizens cannot afford not only medication, but they can't afford to repair their homes. They also don't have the resources or the people that can conduct the labor. And I think that there needs to be a separate funding program to assist the seniors in our city. Thank you. Mr. Sintron. Thank you. One, two. I want to say that seniors has a, there's options for seniors. The county has option for them to apply for loans to fix their houses and those are available, and if they're not, if I'm in council, I would buy for those funding. And also through city council, because I used to have the budget allocated to seniors to fix their homes as a grant. I know that if you're a senior and you're not getting those kind of services, you should be calling your state legislator, you should be calling your, your congressman, and you should be calling your local legislators. Those funds are there for the seniors. Those, and if they're not doing it, call me. Even if I'm not your congressman, call me. I will make sure I go out there and fight for those funding for the seniors. Because I know that when I get old, I want somebody to fight for me the same way I'm going to fight for you. Because I know those dollars out there, and they can't tell me that there's poor seniors who have fought and made the foundations for the city that they cannot fix their home or give them a release of grant. They do it in downtown Cleveland. Let's start doing it to War 14. Mr. Casey. Ward 14 currently has the banking program for seniors, so I would definitely um, continue to support the banking program uh, for the seniors. I would also um, employ or attempt to employ um, youth from the school system during the summer months to assist seniors with simple things like grass cutting, hedge trimming, basic maintenance or cosmetics to houses, Um, I would also engage the Department of Aging to come into Ward 14 for anybody who um, doesn't uh, or needs the assistance. Just the other day, when I was uh, out walking on West 86, we ran into uh, a lady who was extremely bruised, and she was being abused by her sister, who happened to be her neighbor. And we were able to bring the Department of Aging out within two hours to assist this lady um, with her help. And in conjunction with that, they were able to um, help her get some housing issues taken care of as well. So. Mr. Cummins. Thank you. Thank you. This is a very difficult uh, question, uh, particularly because we actually have tried small grant programs in the past. The challenge it became, though, that the repairs that needed to be done were so costly, $10,000, $12,000 roof jobs, etc. And is we've already begun discussing with our roads conditions, with our housing issues, it's extremely difficult to be able to provide that much money to a single resident. So what we've done in lieu of that in recent years is try to find and, and go after and work with nonprofit organizations, volunteer organizations, faith-based organizations. We've gotten multiple seniors' houses painted uh, for free through those programs, and we'll continue to do that. Generally speaking, though, we have a very strong uh, senior uh, assistance programs through the Department of Aging and also through our three um, senior centers, Westside Community Houses, which is the street. 